is an interesting feeling. My float plane took off. And I'm literally all alone in the remote northern Yukon. on the river for about 14 days and looking really forward to it. Another awesome adventure kicking off. Well, here we are in beautiful White Horse Yukon, and I am at Up North Adventures. And this is the place that I get everything ready before I head out on my trip. Tomorrow I'm leaving first thing in the morning to drive to Mayo, and I'm jumping on a float plane, which is gonna drop me off on a remote lake in the mountains called Elliott Lake. I'm gonna follow Elliott Lake all the way to the Heart River, and I'm gonna continue down the heart to the Peel and finish my trip 300 kilometers later where I'm gonna rendezvous with a float plane to take me back out of the wilderness. So I'm super excited. Have a few kind of pre-trip jitters going on here. Up North Adventures is the place in the Yukon that can give you vehicle shuttles. They can rent you boats. They have a full outfitting store with all the things you need to get your trip off the ground here. If you're interested in doing an adventure in the Yukon, give Up North Adventures a shout. We got uh, Mark here. He uh, owns Up North Adventures and he's been kind enough to take a minute in this busy season here to help me outfit this canoe. Uh, they already got it set up with a spray deck tie down anchor points here that webbing along the side and now we're going to put in some bow and stern airbags because uh, the river I'm paddling does have some white water so I'm going to yeah. head out there with the best hand I can. Just trying to learn how to read a tape measure here and figure out how far back we want to set your uh, inflation bags. So we can just go 30 from from the end plate. Is that what you usually do? I was going 30 from inside, but yeah. because you have tanks already. These uh, Novacraft uh, prospectors in Tough Stuff Expedition have air tanks built in, so they float pretty well but we want to add a little more flotation. The Heart River is challenging. I was just talking to some guides. It's not as challenging as the Bonnet Plume, the one I did last year. However, there are some pretty tough spots on it. It's, it's, they basically told me that it's too challenging to run guided trips on. There's a lot of sweepers. There's a lot of tight bends. There's some uh, intense, you know, class three rapids out there, but there's going to be long stretches of just beautiful scenery with swift current where I can just sit back and watch the mountains go by all around me. So I'm very, very excited about this one. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get out there and have a great trip hopefully, but there's a little bit of work to be done first.
This is Nikki. She works with Up North Adventures. She's kind of a big deal and uh, it's the gears of the operation around here. Some people might recognize the name. Uh, my great great grandfather's name is Skookum Jim. He had something to do with the gold rush back in the day. You could Google him. Wasn't he the guy who basically discovered? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who started the entire gold rush. Yeah, that's the guy. That's wild. So he's your great great grandfather? Yes. Wow, that yeah. was super cool. So here we are, we are driving to Mayo Yukon from Whitehorse, early departure and I jumped on a shuttle with this group of people uh, that are doing a trip with Black Feather and they're flying out around the same time as me to paddle another river in the Peel watershed which is the Snake. So thankfully despite their, their, their tight schedule they were able to include me on the shuttle so I have a little company going up this time. We just arrived at Al Can Air, and this is a float plane base near Mayo. And Mayo is known as the heart of the Yukon, which is interesting because I'm paddling the Heart River, H-A-R-T, in the heart of the Yukon. So I feel like there's a dad joke in there. <laughs> Looks like we got some good weather coming, at least for Mayo. This is Black Feather. Yeah, this is Gemma, we're on the floor. Take this down, Roar. Yeah. Looks like a lot of gear, doesn't it? <laughs> what's, the, what's the damage? How much does it cost? One dollar. One dollar, okay. There you go, do you accept tips? Me the solo? Yes. I watched some of your YouTube here. No. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I was here last year, too. Yeah, you've done several trips. Can't get enough, yeah. yeah. Where are you Thank from? You. Uh, Ontario, like right, around uh, Perry Sound. Okay. Hi, Jim. Mm. Oh, Adam. How you doing? What's going on, my man? Good to see you. Yeah. Rory, you're doing all the work for me, man. <laughs> this is my plane. This is a De Havilland Beaver, famous bush plane. For those of you that aren't familiar, the way that we transport a canoe by a float plane is we strap it to the struts, which are these things right here. So that's what we're about to do. Bye, Black Feather. Jimmy, Bye, Jim. Jim. Have a safe trip. Trip. Bon voyage. Not too graceful, but I get the job done. All right here we are on board the Beaver in Mayo with uh, Alcan, and uh, yeah, pulled my bear spray out, put that in the float. We got the canoe strapped on expertly, and we are about to start taxiing. Hot day today. Looking really forward to getting up in the air. How long is the flight, roughly? Uh, it's Maybe. about 45. Okay. Hey! 
heads up on my dangerous ways And I know everything I touch Burns right down to dust Cause I'm reckless Yeah, I'm reckless And I only seem to fall On the wrong side of the law Cause I'm reckless Yeah, I'm reckless I keep my hand right on the flame And I try but I can't see Got Can you it. Just unload the stuff into it. All right. <sighs> what do the water levels here look like to you in this lake? Uh, it's lower. always tough to tell. Like it's yeah. me, they're high right now. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> well, thank you. Yeah. I will. So a lot of forest fire smoke in there. I actually saw smoke from an active forest fire burning, but fortunately nowhere near me. That is an interesting feeling. My float plane took off. And I'm literally all alone in the remote northern Yukon. And it is beautiful, surrounded by giant mountains. No place to camp here. I have a long, shallow, creek to contend with before getting to the Heart River proper. You know, I think uh, I'm just going to start paddling. Another awesome adventure kicking off. Uh, a lot of people don't travel with a firearm, uh, but we are in grizzly bear country here and um, I'm alone. If you're with a bigger group, you're definitely less interesting uh, to a large predator and so um, I'm a little safer with it. This is my ditch kit or survival kit. Um, I keep basically all the things I need on me in case of emergency, in case I should lose my canoe in a rapid. So I'll have my basic survival gear and I keep this on me. The other thing I keep on me is this in-reach satellite texting device. This is actually a Garmin 66i, so it's a fully functioning handheld GPS and an in-reach. I can send messages via satellites. It also has an SOS button, an emergency beacon, and I keep that tethered to my belt on me at all times. It's waterproof. Another thing I keep on my belt, two things actually, I keep a multi-tool and a sheath knife. That way it's always on me. I don't have to stash it in my survival kit. Good sheath, I can pull it out with one hand, use it, put it back. And I like a sheath knife and something pretty big that in case it gets really wet, in case I'm hypothermic, that I can uh, use it to split wet logs and get to that dry interior and then whittle out matchstick sized pieces to get a fire going. Should I lose my ax and all that kind of stuff. So this is a cold steel SRK. SRK stands for Survival Rescue Knife. It's used by the SWAT team in certain areas and it's 3 p.m. 3V steel, which is extremely good steel. So it holds an edge really well. So now I'm feeling like I'm not naked out here. <laughs> big fan of these uh, water pumps but I couldn't find my uh, squeeze filter so I picked another one up I haven't used them for years but they do the job oh yeah a couple more things to do but we're at the point where I set up my fishing rod you never know exactly what kind of fish might be in a given river most of the time uh, but there's typically always gray lake these rivers um, so I might get into some bull trout I might get into some lake trout white fish we'll see but grayling are just beautiful fish and they're delicious too 
I'm gonna throw on a clamp swivel and a little spoon. Got a small little uh, Meps spoons. I also have a lot of Meps spinners and small William spoons. Really have a ton of stuff. They might all have been minnows. That one was pretty small. We'll try it out. Maybe when we get to some deeper water, I'll have a little more luck. good I'm glad I took a little bit of extra time back there just to get everything dialed in I know where everything is everything's packed away properly I feel confident I feel good about uh, getting out here and I am entering Elliott Creek it looks shallow like I might have to start dragging immediately I tried fishing a bit but uh, it's a very shallow lake so if there's any deep pockets maybe the fish are there but uh, strong wind just kept blowing me across the lake but maybe there'll be some pockets here in Elliott Creek that I can try I'm stuck didn't make it too far so I just checked my map again and it's over 20 kilometers of this so who knows how long it'll take me or what the conditions will be like, but a bit at a time. That is a tank grayling. The biggest grayling I've ever seen right here. Wow. Just, it came up and took a, tried to get my lure, but I, it didn't hit. There we go. Yes. Oh, lost it. There we go. That's the color they like, it's silver. Yeah! Oh, right in the boat. Sweet. Oh, it's a whitey. White fish, baby. Maybe that's why the other one was so big. It wasn't a grayling, it was a white fish. Well, I think that that one that I thought was really big, that it was a grayling, it was actually a white fish. There we go. That's a mountain white fish, I believe it's called. Oh yeah, there's one. Grayling. Well, took a while here, but you know, I'm chalking it up as a little R&D, figuring out what kind of fish are here, what's biting. Exciting to catch a white fish and see what was probably, one that was probably four pounds. Just a giant, and uh, yeah, they seem to like the small mouths. So number one or a zero meps silver is what they've been, what I was getting the action on. A lot of follows on the bigger lures, but no strikes.
Well, I just put a long stretch of back to back to back shallow stretches of river behind me. So I was jumping in, jumping out, jumping in, jumping out, and uh, one of them was like pretty much a drag over rocks. So yeah, uh, if there was any less water, things would get pretty interesting, but it should be okay as long as the water doesn't drop a whole ton. Uh, what's going on now though is that I'm pretty concerned because there's nowhere to camp. I'm up high and uh, it's all kind of marshy uh, surroundings and really lumpy ground. No firewood except if you walk way back to the Alpine because uh, I'm in the valley bottom here and cold air sits in the valley so often uh, trees don't grow. Um, partially because the river floods in the spring but also because the ground is just frozen. So. That's okay, I don't need to have a fire, but I need a spot that's flat to set up my tent, and et cetera, et cetera. And right now, I haven't seen anything, so that's already pushing seven. Some of them I can float when I get out of the boat. Some I have to drag a bit. It's like about a 30 foot float here. And I'm back out of the boat. One little pocket here is like waist deep, so. Paddle backwards. Looks like on the map it opens up a little bit on the next stretch, hopefully. Looks like I might have to get out again right here though. Man, this is going to take me a long time if it keeps up like this. Like I, I probably have done like 3k and I have 20. And out of the boat again. I'm just sitting on the back here like this because it's easier to hop on and off because there's literally pools that are too deep to wade and a few feet later you're stuck again. So hopefully it doesn't keep up for too much longer man. Shallow. Looks like the water has gone down. Bummer. Super shallow. It's not even wading. This is just dragging over rocks at this point. I just ran up on some more rocks here for the shallow swift. I'm gonna have to get out and drag. And I stood up and it looks like there might be a place I can camp here. It's not the best, but I'm gonna get out and just check it out. I wouldn't want the water level to come up much more. I suppose I could pitch a tent on this. Really lumpy though. But certainly better than uh, the rest of the stuff around here, which is like this. Well, this is uh, definitely not the best, but I suppose it was doable. Seven, but maybe I'll maybe I'll push on for another hour. I see some like a little hill there, which means there might be some drier land over that way. Bit of a risk, but I think either way, I'm not going to be camping in a primo site tonight. We'll see though. You know, most of the time, as long as there's at least enough flat area for me to lie down you get out and you start hanging out and it starts to feel like home so but uh yeah this time i think i'm gonna have to drag over all this wade through all this and then um get down there and hopefully that lump that kind of like big hill i see hopefully at the base of that there's something that's uh, solid ground so i'm gonna take the risk and move on a little bit
creek starting to pick up. Gonna be some uh, basically linings, not just wadings or draggings. Well, there is that hill I was going for, thinking maybe there'd be some high ground around there. And there's not. There's something I could make work. It's probably not as good as the last place I was at, but uh, I did, you know, make some distance. Um, yeah, this is getting pretty tricky. I have kind of a, a pond-like section here coming up, so maybe first thing tomorrow won't be such a gong show, but I gotta just keep plugging away at it. I'm probably not even 5k in and it's over 20k for sure. It's right on a moose trail too. There's moose prints, wolf prints here and stuff like that. Um, so as long as I can find something that's just big enough for me, I, I think I'll be okay. But uh, yeah, definitely not ideal. Kind of settled in, got my tent set up. I pounded a whole bunch of candy and some beef jerky because I was kind of starved. So I might not cook up my pasta tonight, I might just have the fish and uh, not much food, but I already kind of ruined my appetite. And uh, yeah, I just saw uh, the black flies. As soon as the wind dies down, the black flies are horrific here. Just throwing on a little bit of my muscal insect repellent. This is 25% uh, DEET. I, you know, I typically don't really even put a ton on my clothes necessarily, but uh, I use the 30% DEET. So, and this is a lotion too, I really like this one. A mosquito just flew into my eye. Right, here we go. Yukon whitefish. Mmm. Very mild. Very mild. Not as marked as a flavor as a grayling. You're the only 